Hey, it's Larry Lercy. Welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to take another look at Topaz Studio 2. This time a little more specifically. I've had a little time now to really toy around with it and try all the little different um, things that it does on several different images to try and get a feel for the software. And I've come up with what to me are the seven best effects. Now there's I don't know, tons of effects in this thing, but I'm going to kind of narrow it down to what I think are the seven best. The ones that I'm using, I find that I use the most frequently. They're the ones that I've favorited, and uh, I think they'll probably be your favorites too. Download the trial if you'd like to play along with us. There is a uh, link in the description. At the end of the video, I'll also give you a discount code you can use to get the software even cheaper. So without any further ado, let's go. Okay, now I've got to admit, I had a very difficult time narrowing down to seven different filter effects because it really varies on the image that you're working with, but I've kind of narrowed it to the ones that I think for general purpose, more times than not, they come in handy, and these are going to be the seven, and the first one we're going to go with is basic adjustments. No surprise there, the basic one hits on a lot of the things that you need on just about every image, so I think it's a good place to start. Now if we click presets you will see that we've got some basics in here. One of the things I like to use is my basic adjustment that gets me kind of in the ballpark right off the bat, but since you may not have that preset, we'll go through and kind of recreate what it is. I don't know that there's a whole bunch that needs to be done there. I like to bring the clarity up a little bit. Highlights here are a little blown out, so I've pulled the highlights back just a touch. I've pushed up the saturation a little bit and a little bit of temperature. So if we want to see the before and after, there's the before and the after. It just has a little bit more color, a little more punch to it, and uh, I think that works a little better for what it is we're doing. I'm going to add a little more clarity. You can push the clarity all the way, and you see it almost gives it like a grunge type look, which I think is too far, but we could give it a little bit more. So there I'm at about 0.5. And um, other than that, I think I'm pretty happy with, with what we have here. I, I like the tones overall. The basic adjustment doesn't have to be anything drastic. It's just kind of what it, whatever it is that you like. So I think we're okay with basic adjustment, and that is, that is number one. Now let's go on to effect number two, curves. Curves is, of course, a favorite from Photoshop, and uh, it's basically the same thing here inside Studio 2. And you've got the very familiar curves graph. If you're not familiar with using curves in Photoshop, it's definitely something you can find plenty of videos on. But typically what you're going to do is map out different places along here and then adjust them. And what will typically work well for images is almost kind of an S curve. And as you can see, this is bringing those highlights really hot. We just want a little bit. Play with our shadows a little bit. It's just kind of a nice way to pump up the contrast on an image, but having a lot of control over your outcome. Let's do kind of these midtones a little bit. And I'm pretty happy with that. Again, I always try to turn the eye, little eyeball off here. There's the before. There's with the curves. Uh, maybe even a little too much. So what I might just do is bring down the opacity a little bit to about 76. So uh, I think that works pretty well. Definitely has a little more snap to it. So we've got curves, basic adjustments. My third favorite one, precision contrast. Now what this is great for is really having tight control over, instead of just like we did even with curves on the last step of adding overall contrast, even though we're somewhat controlling it, this gives us a lot more um, specific control over parts of the image. And what I will like to do on this usually is basically I just start at the top and go down and I will adjust this micro and you can see it's starting to bring out some nice texture there. Probably a little too far. Then I will work with the low and I'll just play with them until I start finding a look that I like. And again it's going to vary from image to image. I almost like pulling back here in the mediums the high, 
not doing too much unless we extremely push it that way and then that really starts blocking up those windows um, we can look at our lighting here adjust the shadows a little bit like that bring the midtones up all right I like that um, saturation we've already adjusted the saturation uh, this vibrant sometime is an interesting one again great way to experiment with these is just push it all the way to the right and see what it does Oof, it's a little cartoonish uh, I think that's a little much but I do like giving it a little bit there maybe go to about 0.18 and so basically we've got all these settings how we like them let's check a before and after I like that better again I think that's kind of the thing you're going for with any of these filters is is the image better than where you started and sometimes it won't be sometimes you'll add one and you generally won't add all seven to one image like we're going to do today but I'm just trying to show off these seven and so we're throwing a little more at this than we normally would anyway so we've got three here let's go on to number four which is precision detail much like our precision contrast, this is doing some sharpening, bringing out detail, and you are looking at everything from the small detail, large detail, and we can do overall, we can work in the shadows, work in the highlights. I like to leave it an overall, and again, I will typically come through here and just work on the sliders one at a time. Now, the small detail is interesting because it's kind of giving us a grit on the walls, which um, is very interesting, kind of almost gives it an antique type look I think come down here let's look at see what the large does push that across really starts blocking things up so I find that a lot of times it's not really the best for bringing out the type of detail that I like I tend to use the the small and sometimes medium um, to kind of give that little bit of a grit you get your overall sharpening here um, again you can just push it all the way to the right see what it looks like as you can see that starts getting a little too over sharpened but it's kind of a very graphic look if that's what you're going for certainly you could ob obtain that look but we'll just do a little bit of sharpening like this this was just shot handheld with a point-and-shoot camera so um, it's got a little bit of softness to it from that lighting we've already kind of handled in other effects and that's one of the things that you will notice especially if you're throwing multiple uh, filters at one image is there's there is crossover and um, a lot of them are con contrast for example or lightening the image or darkening the image and so you don't need to do it in every one I think once you've done it once uh, not really much need to play with it any further but it is kind of nice that if sometimes some of the other things you do cause the image to get lighter or darker and you say oh boy I need to take another look at those shadows you can certainly do it and um, play with other areas like that but I'm pretty happy with that so we've got our basic curves precision contrast and precision detail let's jump on to the next one vignette now vignette is not going to be needed in every image you do but I think there is a lot of times that it is great for drawing the focus into the middle. You know, in an image like this, we're really interested in this part of the image here, this little burst of color. These parts aren't as important to us, and so I think a vignette is a really nice way of pushing that focus into the middle. And you can look at the strength here, which turns into a really dark, so we've got to fade that back. The size of it. Again, a little too much of a spotlight. I think probably about like that. And it's just, again, kind of a matter of moving around with it. Now, one thing you can do is uh, play with the color. You can say, well, I don't want a black vignette. You can see here we've got a white vignette. You, know, you could play with some different colors and things. Generally, that's not going to be a good idea. The black is going to be your best bet. It's just good to know that that's an option because sometimes you will have um, an image that it lends itself to and you're like, boy, it sure would be cool if it faded off to like a light blue color or something. And uh, that's how you can use that vignette in that way. We can center it and everything right here. But these are the basic things we're going to do. And my rule of thumb with a vignette is always to be the fact that when you look at the image, you don't see a vignette. You see all the time where people will vignette an image like this and it's just so obvious it looks like you're looking down the you know a gun barrel or something and so I think you want it to be it's like retouching you want it to be where you can't really even see that it's there and an image like this you don't really see the vignetting happening on the sides but if we turn it off 
you can see it's definitely there. In fact, a lot of times when you turn it off and on like this, it kind of makes you think you've done too much, and uh, that's when you're definitely going to want to play with that vignette slider a little bit. But I think that's pretty good. That's definitely doing something, but it's not uh, totally noticeable as being a, an obvious vignette, which is what we're shooting for. All right, let's jump on to the next one, impression. Now, impression is a very interesting one, which again, will not work on every image, but there's a lot of times that it does work, and it's a really nice way to add just a little bit of meat and texture to your image, and you've got basically got a whole bunch of different brushes up here. You kind of pick the type brush you're looking for, the uh, number of strokes, you know, how detailed you want it to be, and I will typically go with the high brush strokes. I like to um, work on a, a lot of stroke rotation to give you some variation and rotation variation as well, just to really kind of mix it up. I don't like playing around with color variation very much. Um, you'll notice if you do that, it starts throwing in all these crazy colors, which if that's what you want, then go for it. But um, for me, I kind of like just playing with a lot of these sliders like this until you get the the look you're going for and then what I will often do is once I get it how I like it play around with the blending mode because I'm not necessarily trying to make this look like a painting if I was I would obviously leave it kinda of more like this but I just am trying to get a little bit of the depth that that this texture brings and so a lot of times you can switch to um, perhaps like that either overlay or I think soft light works really well. And here we are in soft light mode, and it's made it a little too contrasty, and the colors are getting a little saturated. But this is where it's really easy to pull it back a little bit. And if we look at this before and after, it just has a little bit of a, a little more nice glow to it. There's the before, there's the after. And so Again, we've added these brush strokes to it, but unless you really get in close, you won't see those brush strokes. They're just kind of adding texture to the image. And I think that really kind of helps to give you just a little bit of grit and um, give it just a little more impact. In fact, I'm going to drop this back just a little bit more, drop it down there to almost about 30%. I think that works pretty well. And that definitely leads us to my number seven pick, which is texture. Now, texture is much the same thing for me in that I don't typically want to have an obvious texture sitting on top of my image like this. Uh, I'm sure there is the rare occasion that it works, but I'm again more using it for that feel that you get. And so I'm going to almost always, right off the bat, switch to soft light because that's for me, the highest percentage of it working. And then once I'm there, I'll just try some of these different looks. And as you can see, like this one is more bluish, doesn't have as big of a color shift as when we do this one, and everything goes very golden. You can try that, that's a little gonna be over the top. This is kind of an interesting one. And so you go through and you decide what it is, what kind of a look you want. This fabric edge is kind of interesting, you can see through there but I don't want it to be that obvious. Um, so let's try maybe like this flaxen. I think that works really nicely. Again, we're in soft light mode. We're here at about 50%. I think we can stand to take that down. Let's take it down to about 25%. There's 26. Let's do the before and after. And it's lighting it a little bit. It's not really so much adding texture. And so you kind of have to play around with different ones until you find something that's right. This flaming embers looks interesting. We're going to have to dial it down even more. That's about 20%. And play with different blending modes. Try overlay. Um, I still think I like soft light the best. Let's look at this before and after. That's nice. Kind of gives it a warm glow. So from that to that, I think I like this better. It's just definitely giving it kind of this more of a vintage warm look to it. And uh, I, I think that works really well for this image. So here I've got on this image my seven favorite filter effects to use. One thing that I can do is go ahead and save this look, call it uh, favorite seven. Then whenever I bring up a new image, I can go right to this preset and have all seven of these. Now, 
the settings are probably not going to be right for the next image that I bring in. However, it's very easy to say, you know what, this image doesn't need impression on it, and I can just um, hit the trash can and get rid of it. I can say this one needs a different type of texture, and I can go in, change out to a different texture. Whatever I want to do, I can completely get rid of layers, I can mask out some of them, or uh, just tweak them to fit the current image that I'm using. So it really is nice to be able to jump right to the look that you like. And this would come in really handy if maybe you were doing a book or you're doing a series on a, a city or something like that, or just a, you know, a book of travel photography and you wanted them all to have a lot of the same type of look. This would be a wonderful way of being consistent with that look by just saving it as a look and going in and tweaking it on each image until uh, it looks perfect. And they'll all have a very unified feel to them, but you'll still be able to tailor it to exactly what the image calls for. So there you go. Those are my seven favorite effects, or at least the ones that I find that I use most often when I'm using the software. Did I miss one? Is there one that you think is better than one of those seven that didn't get included in the list? I would love to hear your thoughts. I think everybody's got a slightly different workflow, and it would be interesting to hear which pieces different people use. Also, if you've tried it out, love it, and want to purchase the software, you can use the coupon code LARRYPHOTO and that will give you a 15% discount on the software. So I feel like that software is a pretty good deal already, and with a 15% discount, I think it's a no-brainer. So if you haven't already done so, please take a second to subscribe, hit the little bell so you'll know when new videos come out, because I'm gonna dive a little deeper into a few more of the Topaz Studio 2 features here over the next few weeks, and I uh, don't want you to miss them. That's all we have for now, and I will see you soon. Take care, bye-bye.